2021 was the 26th consecutive year of record temperatures. The rate of change is alarming and it requires us to do something different. In 2050, we expect the economy to be twice the one of today. But we cannot afford to have an energy system that is twice the one of today. We're at a crossroads where we, as humankind, need to make significant investments in the way we use energy. As the population of the world grows, the energy requirements of the world are going to go up. The energy equation and the climate crisis are linked in this inverse relationship. We have to substantially expand the amount of energy available and at the same time fundamentally change the carbon intensity of that energy. People talk about transition has always been there in history. Actually, we never had a transition in history. We always had an addition. If you look at the energy system of today, it's still 80 plus percent fossil fuel as it was 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. So the real transition has to be in reducing the amount of energy we need for producing one unit of GDP. That will be the real transition, and that has to happen now. As our world advances, our reliance on electricity expands exponentially, yet our climate goals require our usage to reduce. In this context, it's critical that our systems are more efficient than ever before. About 60% of every electron we produce is wasted. From generation to transmission to distribution, our grid is a very inefficient structure. It's also a very old structure. So understanding what it takes to have a one molecule or one electron of energy is critical. To be able to then to say, okay, how much I want to really consume, how much I need to consume, or how much can be actually saved, how much we can be optimizing our energy consumption. There's really exciting work happening today around smart technology, smart home, and connected devices. These devices have information on the appliance or the heat pump, and we can actually see when it's using energy, and we can make it more efficient, as well as integrated with other loads. Imagine if you could push a button and your entire home would go into low power mode because you're leaving for the day and you just want it to manage that energy. Or there's a storm coming and you want to save as much energy in your battery system. Imagine if you could also have a make me money mode. It knew that the energy rate in the utility environment was high. You had enough energy stored and it would start selling back that energy because your home didn't need it at that moment in time. You don't have to imagine these things. We have software solutions that allow consumers now to have that control in a way that doesn't upset the way they want to live their lives. As the climate crisis continues to disrupt energy transportation, new approaches are needed to ensure resilience. There are multiple reasons why there could be a shock to a system. It could be a natural crisis, natural events, could be cyber attack, or could be disruption in the supply. So as you think about how climate change is driving an increased level of risk in infrastructure, thinking differently about how we generate, store, manage, and use energy is a critical component of that resilience. Energy resiliency means that we're preparing the buildings to either have some energy use that's a backup system or some sort of renewable system integrated with the home or building, and to be able to function when the grid is down. Today, energy is a single directional system. Generate, transmit, consume. Tomorrow, we expect energy to become a bi-directional system. Everybody in their homes will have solar panels and battery storage. Your cars will be source of energy that you can plug in and both charge and discharge. Buildings will have battery storage and other long-form storage. But it's not sufficient to do one building at a time. We need to work at a community scale with groups of buildings. We can actually invest in community scale technologies like microgrids with grid scale energy storage systems. So these community investments and district energy systems can really help us move quickly for decarbonization and sustainability. But how do these microgrids work and what solutions can they provide for us? Microgrids are small controllable power systems composed of generation units connected to nearby users that can be operated with or independently from the local centralized grid. They're increasingly leveraging sustainable resources like wind and solar power and energy storage to generate energy, and they can sustain electricity for the consumer during an outage and allow prosumers to sell energy back to the grid. They can also provide electrification in rural areas. 
A microgrid is a group of connected buildings where the loads are controlled as a system and there's some sort of electric supply and they're controlled separate from the electric grid. So the homeowners are buying into a community that they know they have additional resilience. They know that they are getting cleaner energy. They know that they are ready for migrations to heavier loads like EVs. And at the same time, the grid is more stable because this community exists. And we can fundamentally reimagine the grid architecture. And that's really the future. Homeowners will make changes when they understand there's changes they can make. And they can help accelerate the change in the building stock to make it clean and affordable, reliable, and good for the planet. There is an opportunity now. Energy systems create wealth. Energy systems create jobs. Energy systems create the standard of living that many of us have and many others can have. So transforming it now to a form that is less impactful on the environment and is more socially and environmentally positive is a great opportunity. There are jobs, there is money to be made, and there is an opportunity for growth.